Yeah, she was like, oh, you're from Georgia? How's the breathing going? Oh, gosh. She said, if you take the elevator, some people can't take the elevator if they're not acclimated because they'll pass out. So that's where we're at, is I'm afraid to take the elevator. But no, the girl that told us that, she's so sweet. She just kept saying, hells yeah, hells yeah. And that's about to be my vocal stem for the duration of this vacation is hells yeah. They have more birds here than what I have ever seen in my entire life. There's like another, God, it's not even like goose bees. It's like snakes full of geese in the sky. Every we got another goose nado up here. Oh shit, I won't focus. I promise. We were trying to go to the Stanley and be like, ooh, we're in the Shining, but we're in the birds. They're, you can't stop. They're everywhere. I don't think they fly south for the winter. I think they fly here. This is where they all are. Every bird in the country. Where are we at? Bear Lake. Bear Lake. Watch out. Here come my trekking poles. The U-shaped valley used to be glaciers. Who needs cold girl makeup when you can just be cold? I'm gonna see if I can walk and not kill myself. <laughs> See how glittery the snow is in the sunlight? I hope so, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get back up. Somebody has made the tiniest little snowman.
we told the park ranger that we were from Georgia and we were not acclimatized and to tell us what to do. So he highlighted a bunch of easy trails for dumbasses to do. So that's what we're trying to do. I thought so. Yeah. Had it in the Blue Jay family. Yeah. We gained some elevation because down there is the lake where we saw the Stellar's J. And we're quite a bit higher than that right now. Bonus content is my mom's favorite bird keeps being like within two feet of me every time I go over to this tree. Oh, I see her. Here she comes. I'm not zoomed in. On the road to Dream Lake, Rocky Mountain National Park. All right, so today we started out, we did the Bear Lake Nature Loop, which was pretty easy. Just a loop around the lake that doesn't really change elevation at all. And then we did a little hike to Nymph Lake and then went on to Dream Lake. And when we were on our way back down, there were people kind of like sort of trying to convince us that we would have been okay going on past Dream Lake to Emerald Lake. Here's why we didn't. One, we're from Georgia. We are from like sea level. I was sick as a dog last night from the altitude just by being here. And um, two, my heel kind of hurts. I need to bandage it up. Three, and this is the most important reason. The park ranger we talked to yesterday did not highlight that on the map for us when we were asking about what we should do. We told the park ranger where we were from, how we were feeling, you know, uh, what we thought we were capable of doing. And he, very sweet guy, he highlighted everything that he thought we would like. And he told us about all the little offshoots that would seem tempting, but that he didn't recommend doing because this time of year, even though there's like not much of an elevation change, not many obstacles or anything, he said the conditions get worse and it can be dangerous for people that don't really know what they're doing. And so while we may have been perfectly fine going to Emerald Lake, I do not want to get in the habit of defying ranger advice for any reason, honestly, especially if you're across the country, you're in a completely different climate than what you're used to. You're dealing with an elevation you've never dealt with before. So I'm sure Emerald Lake is beautiful. I'm sure we're missing something, but don't get FOMO if the park ranger told you not to go over there. You'll be okay, Google it. Try again next year. This is why I was sick yesterday. This is the elevation we're at. This is about to like explode. We're doing the easy Sprague Lake loop now. There's the lake. But if you look this way, you see the mountains. Do you see the fish in the frozen pond? Or lake? I guess this is Sprague Lake.
partially frozen waterfall. There's our room. Seeing people in there. So I learned a fun fact today. So we're at the Stanley and everybody mistakenly thinks that The Shining was filmed here. It was not. It was just inspired here. And so people were always, oh, where's the hedge maze? I want to go to the hedge maze. What happened to the hedge maze? There was never a hedge maze until 2015 when they tried to put up a hedge maze. And the elk kept coming through here and eating it. And then in 2016, they were like, well, we got to rebuild. So they rebuilt and the elk came through and they ate it all again. <laughs> and, um... They ended up having to put like little fences around the trees and put some juniper in there because it'll mess up their stomach and they mostly leave it alone. But that's why there's a pathetic, scrawny little hedge maze outside of the Stanley. It's because one, they wanted to have one so that people would quit asking about it. And then it looks like shit because the elk keep trampling it and eating it and tearing it up. <laughs> if you listen closely... You can hear the sound of the haunted ice maker that is next to our room. That's not cocaine. That's just how I've been cold and I'm dry and my face is about to fall off. We are on our way to the pool. This is definitely in more of like a valley, whereas yesterday we were more on like a mountain. But um, it looks like a fairyland. What a cutie! Look at him go. Trying to get coffee at Coffee on the Rocks, and there's ducks on the porch. Well, hi, friend. Well, hi, friend. Uh uh. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Look at you guys! Nathan just reminded me. Didn't you just remind me? You just reminded me that the lesson of the week is that you can always stop halfway through. This applies to doing hikes you have no business doing. And this also applies to this beer flight I just ordered where the cups look kind of big. It's our last day. It's go home day. And we're just like hanging around waiting for kind coffee to open. And we were like, you know, the Stanley could really use an on-site Waffle House. He found out they do have Waffle House between here and the Denver airport somewhere. I didn't think they had Waffle House here. Our last trip to kind coffee at 630 in the morning. There's cars coming. <laughs> I wish I could come here every day. 
There's leaves and snow and I'm imagining elk sometimes because they're everywhere else. Every day we went there, we saw the same old man sit in the corner and we saw the whole Estes Park Fire Department go in there every day too. And it made me feel really cool because I'm in with the locals or whatever, the old men and the firefighters. Watch for wildlife in every road in Estes Park. You fit to find out why. Oh shit, we're about to get stuck, aren't we? Oh man, we did. <laughs> what a view. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. Oh my goodness. We got stuck in elk traffic.